This is another very simple weave. Apart from the half hitch weave, it's probably the easy, easiest of the lot. It became really, really popular about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. People were tying just about every flag that they could lay their hands on with this weave. It's the, the weave is the overhand knot or the knot weave. Some just call it the overhand weave. In fact, if you can tie a granny knot, if you can tie a granny knot, you can do this weave. It's very, very simple. And it lends itself for lots of patterns, pupa and lava patterns particularly. Usual drill when you're practicing this, give yourself a nice long shank hook. This is the usual size two. I've shaped the body up with a couple of cocktail sticks. Just lash them on either side of the shank to give me some shape. Use two contrasting colours. Remember also when you're tying your chenille in, strip off until you get to the core so you don't build bulk up. Now tie your materials in on the sides. So one goes in there and one goes in smack opposite with the stripped part of the chenille up to where you want you to start your weave off. Right where my nail is there. Give them a pull, make sure they won't shift and then you're ready to weave. Now you must get your bobbin off, you can't weave with your, with your bobbin dangling so cut your thread, get your bobbin away and now swing it in so that it's facing you, up facing the, the fly tyre. What you'll be doing, you'll be making something with a dark back and a lighter underside because all insects are counter shaded. So you can do this perfectly with this weave but what you've got to remember is that when you make the knot the light material, the one that's on the underside, is going to come in front of the dark one. When I say in front, I mean holding it like that. That's it. That's This is front and that's back. So make a knot, a simple granny knot, simple overhand knot. And now you split the knot there. So you, you split the knot and you can see it's the dark bar that's going to go over. It'll make you like a figure eight there, just take it back, snug it down and keep your two fingers out at right angles as you're snugging down and you can pull quite tight and now you see the orange material has gone to this side and it will in fact swap sides, it'll go from that side to that side as you weave. So here we go, light one in front of dark one, make the knot, split the knot Feed it over and snug it down. Now the light one's over there. Light one in front of dark one. Split the knot. Feed it over. And that's weave number three done. Light one in front of dark one. Split it. Lift over and snug down. Light one in front of dark one. Check that your little crossovers are all in line at the side and they should be if you put in a, a nice even horizontal, if you pull in horizontally like that those crossover spots should be perfectly in line. And you can get a bit of speed going, but it is quite a time consuming weave is this, compared to, for instance, the shuttle weave. And the other thing you have to be aware of is that this particular weave gobbles up material. So whatever you do on your chosen fly, make sure that you've got enough tied in because it's really annoying to run out. The other beauty about this weave is that you can let go of it, it's not going to come unwrapped, so you could, you could go away on holiday and leave it and it'd still be there. So I'll do another one, and then I'll show you what happens when you reverse the order. That's a good half three quarters of an inch done. And when you turn it, you can see there's a row of orange dots, 
a row of dark olive dots and then when I turn it over you can see a solid orange underside. It is a very pretty weave actually. But what you can do, you can change this from being plain on top and plain underneath. You can actually make it like a football jersey with stripes. I'm thinking about wasps and bees. What you do is you just break the rule. Instead of taking light in front of dark, you take dark in front of light. Split the knot, pass it over, and a presto, you've got an orange bar at the top. So the rule is... Whichever comes to the front, if it's the light that comes to the front, it will be the dark that's on top. If it's the dark that's at the f in front, if it's dark that's in front, it will be light that's on top. So I want a dark bar there. So light in front. Make the knot. Slip the dark bar over. And draw it up. Dark in front of light. Split the knot, and there's the light one. Light one in front, dark bar on top. Dark in front of light, light on top. And I'll do one more. Light in front, dark on top. Now if I turn this to the camera, if I rotate this and look on the sides, you now get the stripes repeating down that little ridge. You get dark, light, dark, light, dark. And obviously when I turn it over, there you can see the stripes on the underside. This particular weave lends itself, as I said earlier, to do all sorts of pupa and lava patterns. And I, I've done some little caddis emerges. I've done quite a lot actually, but I've got a few here to show you. And um, I've copied one or two of the most important colours that are on the stretch that I fish. There's a green and cream. There's one that I actually changed the pattern on that one there. I've made it I've made it a bit stripy like that. That one there, as you can see, that's I've barred that one by changing the weave. And there's one that's a little bit fatter. I've also done some uh, some caddis pupa, some swimming pupa, to copy Ryax and Hydrocyches. What I did with the body shape is what I'm about to do with this. I just lashed a couple of feather quills to the side. For if I want them to be floating pupa and if some of these are, are sinking pupa and uh, with those I just lashed two little strips of lead up the side little bits of lead wire so this one here this has turned out really nice this is sort of dark darkish green on top and a pale green underneath the typical bubble wing and I've put rubber legs in which we're going to do I've used fine rubber and I've done it Madame X style. And uh, you can see, I'll just hold the bubble wing forward, you can see I've used embro embroidery cotton. You can see the olive dorsal surface and I've got really nice change spots down the side. And if I turn it right over to camera, you will see a lighter colour on the belly. And I've done... I've done a few, I've done a few of these, I've, I've half a box full actually at home, it's becoming one of my favourite evening patterns. So, let's do one. Hook out the vise, this big monster, and I'm going to tie the fly on these size 12 K14ST, these nymph emerger hooks. The ones that I had a bit of a bit of a hand in, and uh, they've got this lovely bright nickel finish, which I like. It's quite a, a popular hook, is this? In goes the hook. Get me pliers, knock down the barb. And why I like it, this hook, it's got this lovely 
continuous curve looks really nice and now on with my thread I'm tying with spider web touch it on tap it there wind towards the eye then back on myself to make the, the no waste connection work with the short nozzle coming quite well round the bend so just zoom up and down now I want to build some width onto this I want to make it wide not, not thick not deep and I can't use lead because I want it to float it's got to be in the film as this fly I take off a couple of partridge hackles that's a bit of a wing that broke off you're not looking for good ones any old bit of partridge will do strip off the lower fibres and then with a little bit of super glue just touch the shank there you don't want much and then get your feather and tie these in just on the side and just come down Keep them on the side. And if it drifts, if it drifts round a bit, just, just pull it back. Pick your other feather up. Catch this down on the opposite side. In she goes. When you get round there, nip it quite tight with your thread. And if you wanted to make it wider, you could always double the feather back and tighten again. But this is this is wide enough for me. I just give that a little bit of a, a flattening. I've made it now about twice as wide as the hook shank. That's wide enough. Remember. Your material is going to be tied in there as well, so you don't want it too fat. And now for the weaving, I'm using this embroidery cotton. I've actually nicked it off the wife. So it's, it's just Coates's Anchor brand, I think it's Mercerized cotton. As it comes, it's a little bit too thick for this size. Might be, might be alright for a, a size 8 or a 10. But it's a bit too thick, so what I do is I take out I take out three of the the six strands in here. I take out three. There we are. Tie that on the side and tie it all the way down where your quill's just been tied in, and just drop off the the end onto the shank. And then get your other colour. I'm going for this greeny olive, and you'll need about well dot skin. Give yourself seven or eight inches. Take out, take out your three strands. Offer that on the opposite side. So you want your two weaving materials, as we did on the on the big one. You want your two weaving materials on either side. If you keep them on the side that should be enough padding out to give you a nice a nice woven finish so now bring your thread back to the eye make a whip do another one for luck you're ready to weave just give that another light flattening so remember now when you weave you want to have the dark colour this is a fishing fly now it's not a practice fly you want to have the dark colour on top and the belly colour underneath so it's light colour this, this cream in front of the olive make the knot bring it up Split the knot, 
feed the dark on top, pass it over, make sure that you haven't hung the first one, the first weave on the hook point, because sometimes that can happen, and snug it down. Light in front of dark, split the knot, hook the, the dark one over, light one underneath, and just bed it down. Light in front of dark, split it, pass it over, and we're starting to cook with gas now. And so you just proceed along and you can you can get a rhythm going with this dead easy. This was one of the most, well, probably the most popular weave a few years ago. People are coming up and showing you these patterns they've done and I remember being at a demo in Germany and a guy showed me a stone fly, it was about two inches long. He'd done the entire, entire fly abdomen and thorax, all the lot, with this weave, and he'd used material finer than this. It must have taken him all the afternoon to do it. And one of the beauties of this weave is that you can take tension off and it's not going to go anywhere. So, if you want to go onto the phone or wife calls you in for your tea or you want to suddenly get the urge to go fishing, you can just leave it like this. You can see the nice little white spots up the side coming. Make sure each segment, each weave touches its partner. So you don't want any gaps. So just make sure when you draw the knot up that you've worked it right down to the previous one. And keep looking at it with a, an eye to how far to take it. Because you've got to leave room. I've got to leave room to get a thorax and a CDC bubble wing. So, nearly there now. Split it, pass over. Weaving has a lot going for it, in my opinion. But no one these days seems to be, it seems to have just waned a little bit in popularity. And I'm hoping with these, with these weaves we've done, that you can see there are lots and lots of potential. And I'll make one more, and I'll tie off. Because I don't want to run out of thorax and head space and tying off space. So I'll just snug that down. As it happens, it has gone virtually to the end of where I've tied my materials in. No, I've gone too far. I'm going to have to take one off. And one of the nice, another nice thing about this weave, you can actually undo it with a sharp bodkin. Just drag it forward like that and sort of push them in. And then you can always go in with your bodkin and just lift them out, a presto, you're out. So now, turn it back and I'm ready to finish it. So on with your thread. And now, to tie off, what I do, I usually just draw them up tight for the last time. Bring that one over and tie down. Bring this one up and tie down. And so there you've got it tied off nice and securely. And you can climb up into that last weave just there if you want. And snip off. And I usually leave a little bit of a tag. And what I do, I go down and close that tag right down. Like that. Bring your thread back to the edge of the weave. So now I'm going to put on two CDC feathers as a bubble wing. So go into your, go into your pack and find, find a couple that are virtually the same. If you can't find them exactly the same size, don't don't doesn't matter, it's just that it does it does look nicer if they're identical. 
I feel so anyway. So I've got two here that are more or less the same size. Lay one on top of the other with the tips in line. Turn them so that the tip is towards the head of the fly, the eye of the fly. Concave side uppermost. Hold them by the sides. Just drop the thread round and make a very light wrap and just draw through, draw through, keep pulling, keep pulling till you get to there and now I clinch down, clinch down all the way back to the end of the body and come forward and just tuck them down and when you let go of the CDC plums they should be sitting perfectly one on top of the other, they should, they should be like that not twisted, they should be just like that, curved up. So now I'm going to dub a short thorax and I'm using CDC dubbing. This is a little bit that Marianne Fatnick sent me. And it's a mixture of sort of natural done and there's a bit of tan in it. You can get CDC dubbing, you can buy it. But if you can't get hold of it for whatever reason, you can make your own of course, just chop up either side of a CDC plume and just chop it into like 5 to 10 millimetre lengths. I mean, I've done it myself, it's a bit tedious but you can do it. Just knock it on and just open it out. I don't want it to go on too heavily and I don't want it to go in too tight. I want it to be fairly loose. I want the fibres to stick out a little bit and just come back and make a nice little if I want to have a better word, a nice little blobby thorax I want one or two flyaway ends and that'll do I'll just take that long bit off there now bring your time thread forward and park it in the centre of that CDC dubbed thorax and now I'm going to put some rubber legs in, Madam X style so here's my little bundle of rubber and I've matched the thickness of the rubber up to the size of the emerger. Don't want it ultra fine because remember caddis legs are quite chunky. Hold a strand like that, snip off, inches ample. Bring the leg now behind the thread and come straight over under the weight of the bobbin and sit it on that side. No need to panic, it won't move. Take another leg, lift up, snip off, and sit this on the near side. Try to match the position on both sides, and sit them fairly low. You don't want them high up on the thorax, sit them down, and then come round with another wrap, or two, or three. And where I've tied them in, I've pulled the, the dubbins pulled in. So what I do, I fill that out with a little bit more dubbing. And this time, I roll this dubbing in really tight and fill out in that gap there. And with this, go between. And you've just got to take a bit of care. What, what is sometimes advantageous is to just hold the back leg back like that because they usually want to get in on the act and what that does it pushes the legs wider apart you can just put a little bit more in and now you come forward and you park your thread just in front of those front legs now at this stage at this stage you must have you must have a nice amount there look for tying in your wing and finishing the fly. Get your dubbing needle, hold my two feathers, sit the two feathers back on top of another, quills in line, stems in line, put my dubbing needle in, make a fold over them and then rub up and down there under tension quite vigorously with my dubbing needle. And what that does, it starts curving them nicely. So you get a nice bend like that. And then I 
come again sit one on the other make a loop make a loop measure off your, your loop don't make your loop too small it's got to support the fly so I come about halfway down the body slide the needle out sweep the legs back as you trap the CDC so you might have to just do it a couple of times so you want the two front legs out of the way because you don't want to catch them in and now come round and tie down right there now snap the butts up just to make a, a valley there for the thread to drop into tie off tie off tie off tie off tie off then let go and have a look at your handiwork what you're looking for is you're looking to make sure you haven't trapped a leg down you may find a rubber leg's got more but you can always spring it back and then once you're happy gather the quills down working towards a hook eye to make a good secure connection and then you can lift up the waist butts and detach them and you detach that that's got rid of your waist now I'm going to put two antenna on this pattern and I know I've said previously that I don't put antenna on on caddis patterns well I bet when you've tied this I bet you'd love to see antenna on so what you want is some nice stiff guard hairs such as you get on mink or skunk or muskrat or a bit of legal badger a bit of roadkill so take out two nice Two nice tapering fibres, complete with the tips, hold them together, offer them up, sit them over, come round with a soft loop, just bring them back on the centre line, and then slide back, and I'm going to tie these back now, right back to the shoulders of the eye. Pull back for length. And now tie down right in the right in the shoulders of the eye. And then what I do, I just stick my nail in there to heave them up and take some thread wraps right hard underneath them. That'll just keep them cocked up. And they don't want to be catching the water. It's been nicely stuck up like that. Then I've purposely left myself a fair bit of room up at the head of the fly because I want to be able to make a little CDC head. I'm just going to put a tiny amount on and spin this in really tight, bear down on it. And build up a little round CDC blob and come back. Tying down those stalks all the time, those waist butts. And then drop your thread wrap in there for your whip finish. Hold together, pull through, pull, 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 pull. Snip off. Don't snip these off flush, leave a bit. Like that. And then just shorten your legs. You can leave the back ones a little bit longer if you like. Just come round and you'll find when you've taken weight off these legs, they'll more than likely hang in a, in a better attitude. There we go. Little touch of head cement if you're a head cementer. Sometimes with spider web pulling it into dubbing, I don't bother, but I know you'll tell me I should put head cement on. So a tiny touch of head cement there, the right little bead, and that's enough. Done. And um, it's come out well as this one, I like it. 
and if you turn it to the underside and look at it as though you were the fish looking up at the quarry it's got a really nice profile you can see the wing buds bursting out of the side just as though it's split its pupil shut down the median line and wings are just starting to come out the legs will make a nice impression on the surface they're lovely and mobile it's an all-round nice fly you want to tie some of these now what I do what I do well when I've got them tied like this I just put some dilly wax under there what you've got to realize is that this stuff this cotton that you've used this will mop up water like a sponge and what happens is it will tip the fly and make it hang more like a clink hammer they're okay like that you'll get fish with them like that but I like to see them a little bit more horizontal turn the fly over so that I can see the underside I get my dilly wax which is my favorite floatant it's fixotropic this it melts with your body temperature or you could use gink just squeeze a little bit on the end of my bodkin under there I just rub in dilly wax keep off the CDC but on the abdomen that eventually will soak into all that all that cotton that's weaving the abdomen just run that underneath on the abdomen part alone and you'll see it's soaking it also changes the colour slightly it mutes the colours down it makes the cream go a little bit greyer and that's another one for my fly box so there you see the nice little sort of loose filamentous appearance of those bubble wings it's a very versatile weave um, I'm sure you can think up loads of patterns that you could use it in the diameter of the thread you're using or the gauge of the thread you're using must be in keeping with the hook size otherwise you're going to give yourself an awful lot of work I reckon on this I think I did about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did about eight, eight weaves, eight or nine weaves, and that's you don't need to put it, be putting any more than that on, otherwise it just gets so tedious. As you start going bigger with the hook, so remember to put more CDC feathers in. So your stack of CDC feathers will go from from two, maybe as much as maybe as much as up to four, if you're tying this on a for a say a big autumn caddis you would put more CDCs in. That bubble wing should support the fly. I know this pattern works because I've been using it for a few years now. It catches fish like hell at dusk. So there you are, tie some of these and try them on your favourite stream.